Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Pastoral Thoughts Podcast. This is your host, Jack Young. And uh, with us today is Pastor Samson Ryman, and it is a pleasure and honor to have him with us. He's in town today. He just dropped off 101 chairs for a church plant that we have over in Aronicoy, Brother Gabe Gonzalez. And so Brother Gabe is excited about those chairs. His people have been suffering for Jesus on metal chairs, so now they have real padded chairs. He is very excited about that. Uh, good to have you with us today, Brother it Samson. Is, it's good to be here, brother. It really is. He's preaching for us tonight. This is Wednesday night. Uh, so we're looking forward to that, of course. And so we did have a little bit of time here. It's a little bit after six o'clock in the evening. We thought we could talk about preaching and just working with youth. With youth, Yes, sir. Now, Brother Samson, he... Um, he preaches out quite a bit. He's just a pastor up in Messina, New York. And for you folks that don't know where Messina is, it is about as north as you can go. I'm a missionary. In yeah. America. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and uh, he can throw a stone and hit Canada. Yep. That's it. Yes, sir. And it is cold up there, buddy. Yes, sir. It can be zero degrees for a month straight in the winter. Yes, sir. And yeah. it has been. It's been lower than that for a month yeah. straight. Negative 31. I remember one week, negative 31 for a week. Yeah. Change your life. <laughs> it, you, everything squeaks in that cold. It's like everything squeaks. And then you breathe in through your nostrils, and it seems like your nose freezes. And, yep. yeah, it, it is amazing. I'll do something for you. Uh, but despite, despite or in spite of being a yep, pastor, right. he's, he gets invited out to preach across yeah. the country. And uh, he's a youth preacher. I know I've had him in several times this pit in my pastorate to preach different youth rallies, particularly when we weren't that far away up in Black River. And uh, he, he uh, gets to work with youth. So I thought we could talk about that. And Amen. he's got some points that hopefully be a blessing and a help uh, to you out there. Amen. Amen. Yes. the Working with youth, uh, I started out when 19. When I started working with youth, my dad's church was small. But at one point, we had 90 teenagers on the side of the church. Our house had burnt down. And we had tons of young people get saved through that, our, my dad's ministry and our house burning down. What a ministry, right? Your house huh. gets burnt down. And we were at four, four different schools, so kids started getting saved. My dad's church grew that way. Now, I don't recommend... You, went to, you went to public school, didn't you? Yes, sir. I mm -hmm. did. I did. I did. went to public school. And you were on fire for the Lord as a teenager in public yes, school? Yes, sir. I, I, I played the game, you know, uh -huh. the whole deal. And um, You mean you but, weren't perfect? No, I wasn't perfect. <laughs> and I had... Uh, a lot of my friends got saved, and that's a blessing in my sister's school and my brother's school. And uh, there's five of us, so we were going to four different schools. And when the house burned down, that's when the church grew, and we had teenagers. We were take we took almost ninety. What was it? Ninety eight teenagers to youth camp, and that's it, amazing. It was amazing what the Lord was doing there, and their parents started to get saved. And so I started. I was uh, eighteen, nineteen years old started working with the youth because we had nobody. Yeah. And uh, and I thank the Lord and God sent us somebody because who's going to let their teen go with a 19-year-old on a trip that doesn't have <laughs> right. all the wisdom? Uh huh. And so God sent some men, mm -hmm. and the church began to grow, and I started working beside them. Then eventually, after uh, Bible school and all that, took the teens back, and, and I had a bigger— And you went away to Bible college, came back, and worked for your dad. Y yes, sir. Yes, mm -hmm. sir, I did. And I had a bigger— um, youth group, Sunday school class. I had 60 to 70 teens at one point. Amazing. In some people's churches, even my church right sure. now. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. My church is running about 40. So yeah. uh, it was just time and place mm -hmm. and um, and got to minister to a lot of young people and a lot of challenges. Sure. Yeah, so. And, and these young people who are coming, they didn't have, um, like we have a teen group right now that we have some very, very good godly teenagers Amen. and i take zero credit for that Amen. because they have godly parents Amen. Amen. but um these teenagers that you were working with these 90 the majority yeah. of them i'm assuming it didn't come from no, a godly homes no sir we had the bus ministry mm -hmm. and um i was um, when i got my license we had a van and that's where we started but um the yeah they didn't come from godly homes a lot of them didn't um some of them came from homes with good morals but um, so there was big challenges. It was big challenges and see them and some of them are in the ministry. Sadly, some of them are not. Sure. Um, a lot of them are back at my dad's church. I have kids now. It's amazing to go it's back and generational see them. Yep. thing, see them serving the mm -hmm. Lord. It's such a blessing. Mm -hmm. 
the youth pastor that's at my dad's right now, Michael Shane Morseberger, he is um, one of my youth that came out of a struggling home, and his dad was in Jack Patterson's home. His mm-hmm. dad actually died a couple years back, um, but he is a good young man, loves the Lord, married a good lady. They just had their first baby, but doing a good job. Yeah, that's that's what it is all Amen. about Amen. right there. Amen. Is keep them and and see the generations and yes, sir. Won't yes, be sir. too long that uh, they'll be asking you to marry off their kids and everything Amen. else. Amen. And so you you were youth leader for your dad for how many years? Uh, thirteen years, I think it was. Yeah, thirteen years. And before you went to pastor Messina, you've been in Messina for how long now? Uh, seven years, November. That's amazing. Time flies. Yeah, it does fly. It does fly. Yeah. So what do you what points do you have for us? Well, there, there's three things. There's a lot of different things with teenagers. Um, but over the years, we, we run a youth camp right now, too. Mm-hmm. The almost, we had 450 before COVID. Yes. And, um, and so over the years, you see a pattern of things. Teenagers, are the, they, they have different uh, challenges, but they are still the same as you and I were when we were teenagers. I mean, they're people, too, right? Right, that's right. You know what's, you know what's funny, and I think we make when you're a teenager – uh, the preacher preaches at you, and you think that adults don't struggle with the sins that you struggle right, with. Right. And one thing that I have discovered being an adult and knowing adults is adults get into the same exact trouble that's right, that man. teenagers do. And sometimes a lot more of it. Right, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, you, you learn some things. So there's many things we can talk about uh, that teens have problems with and, and go through. And then they, you know, we're – we're seeing our country change. We're seeing mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. I, I, I'm looking at my children, and, and, you know, I've never had to wear a mask, and they have to wear a mask, and all the fears and, mm-hmm. and anxiety and all those things have come up. But I, I really believe that we failed as, uh, as parents sometimes, and we fail as pastors. And I'm not trying to take shots. I'm just saying looking at the Bible and looking at the way our young people, we hear people complain all the time. Well, we're back in my day, you know, I used to work and these mm-hmm. kids are lazy. Well, why is that? Yeah. that That's my question. My mm-hmm. thought, why is that? We dropped the ball somewhere. Mm-hmm. And so these three things, one is uh, setting their hope in God. And, mm-hmm. and the Bible gives us um, uh, a formula for that. In Psalm 78, uh, verse 4, we will not hide them from their children, showing them the generations to come, the praises of the Lord, his strength, his wonderful works that he hath done. Verse 6, that the generations to come Amen. might know them, even uh, the children which shall be born, who shall rise and declare it unto their children. So we're supposed to be declaring it of every generation, uh, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments, uh, and might not be as their fathers, and this is important, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. And so what I'm trying to say here to set their hope in God, we got to show them three things God gives in this this passage mm-hmm. so they wouldn't be stiff-necked and hard-hearted. Mm-hmm. The hardest thing is to win somebody back to God that's been out of church because they've been stiff neck and hard hearted. Mm-hmm. It can be done, but if you can keep that kid's heart tender, yes. if you keep a person, just a person, but a, a teen, keep his heart tender towards God, setting his hope in God, the three things that's showing them the power of God, show them the pray, the, excuse me, his performance. This is wonderful works as I, I put it in homiletics Amen. there. Yeah. Yeah. Power performance in his praises. Yes. And so I try to encourage parents to do that. We do that with our children all the time. We'll do something at church or go to a meeting or they're reading their Bibles and they and God shows them something and we speak about it at the dinner table. And, and so you're talking about the goodness of the Lord. Right, the goodness of God. It keeps our hope in God. Yeah. Uh, through this whole pandemic, we've talked to our kids and other kids. I always try to see, hey, look, look at what the power of God did here Mm -hmm. look at his his the way he worked this out his wonderful works Uh, we could have never afforded that but god knew uh i could tell you story at the story of my children my son plays really good basketball and he didn't have a basketball court we were at a meeting and a man came up and really fell in love with my son he said does your son have a basketball court and i said no and me and my wife are just talking about praying about the lord letting us find a a used one just a used one he bought him a brand new one (laughs) <laughs> sent it to our house for him. 
And wow. so we praised the Lord and said, look what God did. Right. And, and, and that, you're, you're, God you're celebrating the Lord, and right. it's, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. That's it. Amen. Because and, if we don't keep that up, and that's where we're at in America, uh, God's not good. And, and, it, and your, your kids catch on to what the big, big deal is. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. Um, if you're making a big deal out of the Lord, right. that's what they get excited about. God is the biggest thing in our home. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and my church, I always want to hear testimonies. Hey, what did God do? Because we have a tendency to look at the negative. We have a tendency to look at what's wrong instead of looking at what God uh, would have for us. And his praise is being able to praise yeah. him. Now, my parents would do this. My dad's an ex-gang leader from D.C., got saved, and and not knowing that there's a formula in the Bible, he just did it, and my mom did too. And my dad goes play. He sings wherever mm-hmm. he goes. He doesn't care. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll be yeah. in Walmart. Uh, he had a whole restaurant singing, and a, uh, a black church had come in from church and then got them singing and uh-huh. then we sang back to them and uh-huh. then my dad got preaching and then they got preaching back. It was and, wonderful. And your dad is just uh, not ashamed of the Lord. No, at all. he's not. He is not. Tell, uh, tell the audience about uh, him witnessing to Joe Biden. Yes. My graduation, uh, Joe Biden spoke. I was, I'm graduated from Polytech high school in, in, um, Wood, uh, was it Woodside, Delaware? And, uh, he was a Senator at that time. Uh-huh. And so they had him come speak. It was a big deal. Yeah. And my dad got to witness to uh, Joe Biden and challenged him to come to church and told him if he didn't get saved, he would die and go to a devil's hell. But God had a different plan for him, Mm -hmm. but really laid it out. Yeah. And, um, and, and he, he double dog dared him. He said, he said, uh, he said, well, I'll come to your church. I promise. He said, (laughs) he said, don't lie to me. You're a politician, you know? And, uh, and and Biden Uh, laughed and everything. uh, And, and so, but he got a gospel track and got, got the witness yeah. too so that was really neat but yeah. that, that kind of stuff like that and, and, and so as a, as a kid growing up that um the lord was a big deal in your household yes, and sir. A, yeah big deal from the life that my dad lived to what it was in our home it was so much different yeah and god was the biggest thing and god i mean he would show his power i mean my dad was telling me you know after he witnessed he said i would have never been able to i'm a gang leader from dc Got to witness to a senator. Yeah, he even got to um, go to. Uh, oh, I think it was Bush. Okay, he had a one of those dinners, mm-hmm. and they went around the room in this huge room, thousands of people, and put the light, gave him a mic, and he stood up. He said, "I'm a I'm a Baptist preacher, Smyrna, Delaware," and he said, "Listen, I want to let you know Jesus Christ came and died for you." Says at this uh, big old meeting with yeah. Bush, it was it was <laughs> something, awesome. and and my dad would always praise the Lord for the opportunities he given him. Mm -hmm. knowing where he's come from, Mm -hmm. that, you know, he's not a very educated man. He didn't graduate with a a diploma. Uh, He didn't have all that. He couldn't read or write, you know, all that kind of stuff. Sat on the front pew, and and God had did amazing things with him and used him. He's he's led thousands of people to the Lord, my dad has. He's a soul winner. And so we got to see the set their hope in God, which Mm -hmm. kept a lot of us, five of us, kept our hearts tender. Everybody's in church. We've we've all strayed somewhere, but my brother strayed the, the farthest and came back. He's a song leader now at my dad's church. <laughs> That's awesome. It's awesome, but it's because it kept our hearts tender. Yeah, and stiff neck and hard hearted. And God promises in this passage. So your your number so your number one goal uh, with your kids is keep their heart tender towards God yes. and develop that relationship with the Lord. Yeah. Yes, and then sir. you said that they're they're human. Yeah, they are human. They're they, people. They, they're people. Um, but one of the things about being human and a, and a person now in your teen years is not going to happen. Uh, you're not something later that you're not now you're developing, right? but take, you're trying to get them to take their walk with God seriously. Amen. Let no man despise thy youth. Right. So you can be a teenager. You can be a woman of God. You can be a man of God Amen. as a teenager. Amen. Yes. And, yes sir. And so as you're preaching to the youth, which you preach cross country, uh, would you say that's like your number one goal when you're preaching, when you get up and you and God lays upon your heart a text of scripture, you're trying to get these kids, number yeah, one, amen. to place their hope in God? Yes, sir. Place their hope in God. Mm-hmm. Um, that's number one. Um, he wanted the children of Israel to do that, uh, just that he loved them. Uh, kids don't realize how much, especially church kids, because we've been in it all our life and you grew up in church just oh, like yeah. I did. Yeah. We don't realize how much um, we are blessed and how much we have. We look at 
uh, this guy was a gang leader. This guy was in this, and he got saved. Yeah. No, we are so blessed oh, being saved yeah. when I was saved when I was four years old, mm-hmm. and being able to have that opportunity and to exercise the the promises of God yeah. in my life. And it's been a it's 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 just been a joy, a joy to Amen. serve the Lord, brother. Amen. And um, what's number two? Number two is um, speaking kindly. And uh, uh, the Lord has um, gave me this. Now, I know that we're Bible believers, and we believe that um, that Christ is our Savior, and we're the church. Mm-hmm. So we're the bride, right? Mm-hmm. And so when you get over to Proverbs chapter 31, it talks about the, the Proverbs 31 woman. Yeah. So I apply that Proverbs 31 woman as the church. Sure. In some areas. You can do that, right? Absolutely. All right. She opens her mouth, the Bible says, with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Yeah. And I've been preaching this lately because I've noticed the the unkindness. T- teenagers are never mean to each other, are they? No. no they're, they're, they're not. <laughs> and then unfortunately... I mean, adults are nasty on social media, uh, but adults should know better. Yeah, yeah. Because if I, I can, I'm not going to say something to your face as nasty as if I just like in on social media right. or a comment yes, or a post. You got it. <laughs> uh, and so we do live in an age where we have an epidemic of bullying. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And a, a lot of and a lot of kids need to learn the law of kindness. Yeah, that, Adults do too. Obviously. Yeah, it said in her tongue was the law of kindness, and that law comes from your heart mm-hmm. because out of the mouth the heart speaks, right? Mm-hmm. And so it comes to heart. So people can be nice, but nice and kind are different things. They're very different. Sure. Uh, there's a lot of people that are nice, uh, but but they are not kind. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that, if you went to First Corinthians chapter thirteen, it talks about charity. Yeah. And, and, and it's amazing, brother, how God, uh, Paul wrote this. He said, charity suffers long and is kind. So there's seven of the charities in there, and then there's eight negatives. But he puts uh, love, uh, suffereth long and kind first, mm-hmm. and then he puts the eight next negative. So those two things you're going to have to, to ever be kind, you have to suffer long. Mm-hmm. And we don't like to suffer long. No, no, no. So we're cruel, and kids are cruel. Uh, I watched a thing on the phones and all that uh, uh, the world had put out, and the kids are going into depression because of somebody unliking them or not putting their name on a picture. Right. Or whatever. And it's, a, it's an epidemic yes. for teenagers. Yes. Uh, they're encouraging and- each other to kill each other. It's another one. Sure. Yeah. And then we have we have a, a breakdown in the home. There's not security in the home. They're right. trying to find security other places. One of the th- places they go, unfortunately, is social media. And every time they get a like or this or that, they get a little hit of dopamine because yeah. yes, their their social group um, yeah. has accommodated them and told them, "Hey, you're you're good." Uh, but then the opposite happens. Yes, that's right. The opposite and, happens. And and unfortunately, like when you and I were kids, man, I I just think, man. We had to work harder to get in trouble. Right. <laughs> Where you got this, you know, you, now these teenagers have this st- stupid computer in the pocket. Right. Adults, right. too. Right. Again, right. We, we can rail on the teenagers, but the adults are right. you know, just as guilty. Uh, but they can't escape from their social group. Like when you and I got off the bus from school and came in the house, we were at home. Right. Yep. But they, they, and that's it. You know, yep. mom, dad, brothers, sisters. Uh, but when they come home, they still got that device. Yep, they yep. can't escape that social group. And if one, if one's a weak link, then the the just they'll say a joke. The Bible talks about it's like a uh, a madman throwing fire brims, mm-hmm. and then he's saying this. I'm not quoting it right, but he said, "I'm just kidding." Yeah, I'm just at jest. I'm, I'm in jest. That's, yeah. what, that's yeah. the way it goes. I'm in jest. And he's just joking, but he's really hitting the point, and a lot of teenagers do that. Well, a joke is not a joke unless there's an element of truth. Right, exactly. <laughs> so. and, and, brother, I was the worst as a pastor's kid. Sure. When all those teenagers, we had a lot of teenagers. I heard a lot of young people, and I regret it. Yeah. Because, you know, I was a pastor's son, and people looked up to me. And you, I was you, charismatic. You, and, you had be by default, um, uh, high status. Yes, Yep, high status. And I was a geek, man. Yeah. Really, to the world. Yeah. 
I was a geek. I was I I, I wasn't very. I'm, I'm a special ed kid. I have uh, dyslexia and and this and and man, I would I was quick with my mouth and I was cruel and mean. And I look back and there was boys that were called the preach stuff and I hindered their walk. Now they got their own choice now. Sure. I don't hold that on me, but I, yeah. I, I did ask the Lord to forgive me and I've asked them. I've went to some of them and said, listen, if the Lord remind me, remember when we were teens and I said this and I did this, would you forgive me? I've sinned against you, brother. I'm sorry. Yeah. Because I wanted to make it right. I realized that I want to, I want the law of kindness. But you, you had that big, um, teen group and, um, I know your dad, I'm not, I'm not real close to him, but I know right, right. him. I know Brother Ryman, and of course I know yourself. Uh, I know that you got 90 plus teens, not because you were just having a big entertainment center. Right. right. That it was an actual they ministry. Just, yes. And those teens came there because somebody was being kind to them That's there. Right. That's right. Someone made them feel like you belong. Right. Sure. Uh, you know, I say this, um, Here's a phrase I stole from somebody and repackaged it as my own, you know. But uh, um, you, anyone can be friendly, but not anyone can be a friend. There's a That's difference good. between being a friend and being friendly. Amen. Amen. That's real good. So you can be kind. Yes, sir. But not the not the, the law of kindness, yeah. suffering long. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And, and there's tons of Bible verses. But in 1 Corinthians 13, it it's it's amazing at verse 11 he says when i was a child i spoke as a child i understood as a child i thought as a child but when i became a man i put away childish things mm -hmm. and so it's it's almost saying when i put on that charity yeah i became a man amen because i've stopped being a child and i begin to speak the bible says speak truth in love mm -hmm. that they may grow thereby and so we we see charity at the top of the list of every list of biblical attributes. Yes, sir. And uh, charity is something that a teenager can have. Yes. They can be mature spiritually. Amen. Amen. Yeah, as my, a teenager. my son, I, I just recently was at a, a youth meeting last month and I, I preached on kindness. And um, one of the testimonies, a boy, my son was playing volleyball and he said they were losing pretty bad. He said on Israel's team, my son's name's Israel. And he said, you could tell Israel was a little frustrated because he wanted to win, mm -hmm. but he, he he brushed it off. He went over to the guy that kept on messing up and said, hey, good job, keep it up. And that impressed that boy so much, I, and I was thankful that, you know, you want to teach your kids these things. Yeah. And he didn't, yeah. uh, when you're not around, you want them to, <laughs> yeah, to right, be able to right. use it, right? Uh -huh. And uh, that boy was so impressed, he said, because me, he said I would have been saying something wrong. <laughs> and he publicly told everybody that he, he needed to work on that. Yeah. After that message. And I had a lady give a testimony that when she was a teenager in the church, she was. She was so mean. And a lot of those kids she was mean to were not in church. And it haunts her. Mm -hmm. And and, and, and I, I know parents out there listen to this and people that are growing up in church, you you realize the things and you so you need to stay on top of your kids teaching them how to deal with situations, yes. how to be kind, what words to say. Because a lot of times they learn it from home or mm -hmm. they learn it from TV. Mm -hmm. They learn it from school. Um, if it's Christian school or uh, public school. They, mm -hmm. they, yeah, they but learn. either one. Either yeah. one. No. Because it's the heart of man. Mm -hmm. And so if you could teach them to be kind. Mm -hmm. um, the first time I ever preached it was at my dad's youth rally. And there was a lot of teens apologizing to each other. Not because of me. Uh, right. I'm not saying because I preached it. The, the verses in the, the Bible is so powerful about what Paul says. Yeah. Endeavoring to keep the unity. Yeah. yeah. Forbearing. Yeah. And those and, things. Yes. Yeah. And that's something teenagers need to be aware of is that they, they have murder in their hearts. Yes. And when you go after somebody, you are assassinating their character, their right. personality. You are, in a sense, you know, if you call your brother a mm -hmm. fool, you're guilty of murder. Yes, sir. You have assassinated them. And that's just something, like you said, it is in our flesh. And we, yeah. oh, we're yeah. all gang piling this person? Well, yeah. that's, yeah, let's, I'm going to jump in and pile on. Uh, and so that, that, that's, uh, that's great. That's something that teenagers right. need to be aware of. Right. And we do it in our churches. Adults do it. Oh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. And I've seen pastors do it. And I said, Lord, I don't and, want and, to be that way. And then you can have a culture of that. I mean, pastors can do it to their people. And yeah. guess what? You reap what you sow. That's right. And your turn's right, coming, bro. buddy. You, right. you better beware. Yeah, right. yeah. 
Well, they're, they're the two. The last one is um, solving problems. Mm-hmm. And um, solving problems is a huge thing. Not just solving problems by itself, but solving problems with wisdom. Uh, the Bible talks about in uh, Philippians uh, 1, 9, And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and all judgment. And so that judge, being able to solve those problems with judgment, um, many young people don't learn this. I mean, you're dealing with people um, coming from messed up homes or divorced homes. They don't learn how to solve problems. So mm-hmm. when they get, become adult, and you've seen this, you, you will totally agree with all this because it's happened in our churches. Off time, they resort uh, to extreme anger when they, they don't know how to fix the situation. Mm-hmm. You may have had church members do that. It's just a meltdown, stop, yeah. break. I had a man that didn't like, and I, I'll say this, I tell people this, did your pastor or that person sin against you or is it preference? And and I teach teens that. You got to make sure it's not just it's not a, just a preference, it's a sin. And this man got so upset at me and I told him I needed to talk to these other folks' parents who were going on this trip. He sat out in his car and texted me like a little kid trying to force me to do what he wanted by saying, we won't go on that trip if you don't let us do this. And it just very, very childish. He mm-hmm. didn't know how to just wait. Let me talk to the parents and find out because that is, they were the guardian. It was the grandparents. They were the guardian and I need to find out. And it was nothing wrong. I don't mind the idea you had. I didn't mm-hmm. mind going that way, but I wanted to check. Yes. But because I didn't listen to him and I didn't. And so, Instead of just being patient and waiting and understanding that pastor's doing his job by going to the proper authorities. Um, they also tend to uh, follow easy and they're led by people that overpower them mm-hmm. because they don't know how the problem solve. Mm-hmm. They resort to sinful methods to get what they, they want. Uh, they come easily depressed um, and withdrawing themselves from facing problems. Uh, they often have relationship problems in marriage and friendship mm-hmm. at church, at mm-hmm. work, et cetera. Um, it's a learning skill. It's just something sure. that we don't. And I, I think it's um, a, I keep on saying epidemic, but in mm-hmm. our society right now, because of the breakdown of the home, but uh, inside the household of faith, yes, sir. we teach te- teenagers that, hey, you're surrounded by a group of people who know the Lord, who have the Holy Spirit inside of them. That's right. You have certain men and women of God, and the Bible tells us to mark those who walk so. Yeah, amen. And those are, can be your spiritual counselors and advisors. Yeah, amen. amen. It's and, great. and even teenagers from good homes, I, I want my kids, and we have them here, and I know you got godly men and women at your church as well for your kids to look up to. Yeah, amen. I'm so thankful for those people because um, – they, they have a multitude of witnesses. They have a multitude of counselors who know the word of God, know my children, That's right. and can guide them through life's decisions. Yeah, and, and be able to learn from their experience. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I heard a preacher say one time, uh, it's great learning from somebody else's experience instead of you going through it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Amen. And, and yeah, it, it's great. Yeah, so let somebody else go through the school of hard knocks for right, you. Right, and when somebody yeah. else teaches you the thing. You know, I got a few stories just with my kids because we've we've taught them since they're little to try to figure things out and try to do it biblically. So mm-hmm. when you have how that you have a big God, you know, the, your your hope is in God and kindness. My daughter, we were at a uh, at a meeting and there was a little girl there being really mean um, to the other kids and she's punching. And my daughter <laughs> Isabel's thirteen years old and she's punching the kids and stuff. And, and instead of going over there and telling her stop, uh, she said, "Hey, honey, will you come here?" And sat down and said, what's your name? And got asked her and found out that she was mad her daddy had left and yeah. all that. And so Isabel began to ask her questions and got her focus off of doing that. Yeah, And on. then started talking to her about being kind and had yeah. compassion on it. Yeah. Instead of saying, hey, you stop. You, you, you could have fought fire with fire. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, evil with evil. And she didn't. She mm-hmm. tried to figure out, okay, she's expressing this for a reason. Because you know her mama's probably just saying, don't do that, you know? Yes. And um, she's expressed for a reason. So Isabel got to minister to her. Yeah. At 13 years old yeah. for a little girl like that is a blessing. And, and you, um, you with your children, you like to um, have discussions with them about yes. different things. You like to let them form their own opinions biblically. Right. 
Yes. And um, I always want to leave it open. Mm-hmm. Here's another thing I teach parents and people and uh, have open end questions. Yeah. Not just yes, no. Because I said they're so. Closed, they're, they're closed in questions. Yeah. Get to know their mind, where they're at. Mm-hmm. And so when we spend time with teens, and I do this with people too, but with especially teens, a lot of teens shut up and shut down. Try to get ask them questions where they open up and be, feel comfortable to be able to talk. And you're not railing on them, but you're trying right. to show them through God's word. Like my daughter, Grace, we were just recently in Delaware for Thanksgiving, and we had to go out. Her and me went to go to the grocery store. She's only eight, and she doesn't hear cussing and screaming and people fine. Well, <laughs> uh-huh. my, gra- my her grandma lives in a nice uh, area, but they were having a huge argument, screaming and hollering, screaming and hollering. And so we um, get in the truck. We're riding down the road. She starts singing, and she says, Daddy, you know why I'm singing? I said, why is that? She says, because I was scared. I said, really? What are you scared of? And, and I knew it was maybe that. She mm-hmm. said, I, those people were yelling, and they were uh, saying some stuff in another language too, uh, not just cuss words, but their, their language. They were uh-huh. from a different culture. And, they, um, and she tried to say it, you know. And I said, well, be <laughs> careful saying it, repeating what you hear, you know. Uh, but she said, I remember Mommy teaching me when I get scared that to sing about the Lord and how good he is. Amen. And it calmed her, she said. Yeah. So we sang together as we went to the grocery store. That's and, right. And it That's was, awesome. It's a, it's a blessing because I didn't have to tell her to do it. She started problem solving. Yeah. yeah. And she's explained to me what she did, yeah. which reminded me as a dad, when I'm in fear, I can sing about the Lord. Right. So she taught you a lesson, right? Right. Yeah, that's it. Because <laughs> we, <laughs> we full-grown male adults have fears too, you know? That's it. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I, tons of stories. My son was 12. He's 17 now. And he was, I let him play basketball at the park with these grown men. He's really good. And I said, um, I said, guys, let him play. And I said, he's 12. They're like, ah, you know, I'm 30, 40, 25 year old. And I said, just let's let him play. So they don't play. And I was walking away. I could hear him say, oh, boy, this boy can play. Yeah. Well, we got in the car and my son's riding down the road. He said, yeah, I'm going to stop playing with them. I said, what's that? He said, they started cussing. And so he said, I told him, here's a 12 year old boy. He told him, he said, hey, guys, stop cussing, please. They said, he said, if you don't, I'm, I'm going to stop playing. They were like, no, we don't want you to stop playing. And so they cussed one more time. He, he, he took the ball and said, guys, I told you, I'm done. 12 years old. Yeah. And they were like, no, no. And, and the one gentleman, he said, listen, everybody got to stop cussing. We want this boy to play. And I, I praised him for that. Yeah. You know, I said, man, that's good that you stood for that, son. Yeah. Little did we know that God used that one guy uh, when he was 14. He wanted to play basketball. Seeing my wife, he said, your son's the one that told us stop cussing. <laughs> He's a good ball player. He said, tell him to come over. I, I guarantee he could play in the men's league. He was 14 years old. He started playing in the men's league. And my sons was able to witness to a lot of those, and me too, because I played with them, got to witness to these men. It opened up doors yeah. for problem solving. Yeah, that's great. And it's it, it's a great tool to teach your kids. And I could tell you story after story sure. of just different things, the problem, and we have and, to and teach you, them that. And you allow in your son a little bit of exposure with right. men of the world. You know there's going to be cussing on that yes, ball sir. court. And you gave your son an opportunity. You weren't over leaning over his shoulder right. for him to, to, to make a stand. Yes, sir. He's yes. flexing some spiritual muscles Amen. Yeah, as okay. a young, young man. Because that it goes right, goes right down the line. You have a wonderful God mm-hmm. that will always protect you, take care of you. You stand as a man. So we yeah. don't let our son, we teach him not to be led by girls unless they have a good idea and you accept it. Yeah. But you have these little bossy girls that go around and tell the boys what to uh-huh. do. Uh-huh. We, we teach them biblical things to be able to live life and then let them exercise it. Because we're homeschooled. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> not yeah, in public school. Yeah. And, and so to be able to exercise those things. And so what I've done over the years, and I wish I would have got this when I was a youth pastor. Sure. A lot more of this, but I learned. You've learned a lot. Yeah. And so I try to give it to other youth pastors. I try to preach it in my messages. Maybe, maybe you knew it when you were younger, but you couldn't articulate it. Exactly. And then you just made some stupid mistakes in the ministry, which we all do. (laughs) We all do. And that's how you learn. Unfortunately, a lot of times these, yes, sir. These are the things I've learned. um, Yeah. And we try to, uh, um, put them in our kids and in other kids yeah. uh, to teach them. So but it's a blessing. I, I, Amen. I, I, I'm thankful to see 
the Lord, I'm giving you an example because my kids are the ones I've seen the most right yeah. now. But um, we've seen other people when I hear about it. Because sometimes kids, Christian kids, do it. And I'll be at a meeting or like your church and talking to a Christian kid, and I hear a story. I praise them. Sometimes my, my wife has given them five bucks. You know, I've yeah. bought them ice cream and say, man, keep on doing what you're doing. Because sometimes they stumble off because they see it. Yeah. As a Christian, the preacher's preaching. You start seeing these things and say, man, you know what? I need to be kind. And so kids in my church, when they do those things, or I hear them, I praise them. I say, man, that's good. You know, you just you're, you're, obeyed. You're marking good behavior. Right, marking good behavior. Yeah. Because yeah, we always want to mark bad. you got, you got <laughs> yeah. to straighten this out. You better mark mark the good. That's right. Maybe Amen. twice as much as you do the bad. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Well, that it's it's awesome. Good uh, good stuff. Yeah. Amen. Brother. We got to wrap it up because yes. we we got a service here in just a little bit. Amen. Yes, that was good, brother Samson. You could take those uh, those points and uh, do them in the Bible study tonight yeah. if you wanted to. Yeah. Amen. I won't tell anybody you did it twice. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> but uh, if someone wanted to watch some of your sermons or contact you, got a church website or something. I do have a church website. It's uh, Central Bible Baptist Church at dot org, and uh, there's some sermon audio. Okay, some on there. Great, uh, things like that. So. Okay, and uh, and so if you enjoyed this podcast today, please subscribe to it. And if you're watching it via YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button and also that little. Um, uh, the little bell, so it uh, gives you an alert every time we put out a podcast. Uh, next week, we got Charles Barkowski, missionary to Greece, and he's in town for a little uh, COVID reprieve here, or uh, stateside until he can get the green light to go back to Greece. Uh, so he should be with us. Uh, but anyway, stay tuned. God bless each and every one of you.